Okay, it's another day of BC here, ladies and gentlemen. I am Wolf, with me is Val, we got a bit of audio trouble for the first few seconds there. But, welcome to the show, and we've got some really good players coming at you guys today. A mostly CJ and just day, Beck. Yeah, pretty funny, I mean, just to list them off, we got Hero Byung, they'll be playing a little bit later, and we also got Sora, another CJ and just player, he's playing against Zest here in the beginning a PvP. Uh, I feel like we say this nearly every day because it's true. Like you just said, we just have a lot of good players every single day. Yep. This tournament is stacked. It's It's been stacked from the beginning. It's been a really fun ride to find out, you know, who's made it all the way up here to the round of eight. We're going to find out two round of four players today as well. Uh, we had some really great matches yesterday. Both matches, in fact, going all the distance, all the way to game five. So we can imagine, you know, I expect that we might see something similar to that today. Uh, the Protoss versus the Protoss is the one that, that I feel might not. Uh, but the, the team kill, the, the matchup between uh, two CJ Antis players, that PVT that we're going to see the second match, is the one that I feel could really go the distance. Yeah, I would definitely have to agree with you. I feel like the PVP, I feel like if one player kind of runs away with it, they definitely can take a quick victory, maybe a 3-1 or even a 3 -0. Um, I myself would go with Zest, but it feels like you have a little bit of a different opinion about this. I Wolf. think uh, I think Sora's going to take it. I think he, he looks really confident today. He looks really happy uh, and excited. Uh, this is a tournament that he did really well in last year and obviously uh, got all the way to second place in the grand finals in China. So, I mean, this guy loves this tournament. He's really motivated to do well here. He's got a lot of great practice partners to work with on his team. And Zest is the Kingslayer. You know, he's uh, the type of player who actually defeats top tier players, the type of player who defeats champions, defeats championship teams. But uh, I don't know, Zest can get a bit shaky in Protoss versus Protoss sometimes. Um, let's talk briefly about our results from yesterday. TY and Stax advanced over Dark and Super respectively. Yeah, both of those series, like you said, going the whole distance to game five, very entertaining series. Definitely like that first uh, series between TY and Dark, that game five especially, really, really close. And for today, like we did mention, we got Sora versus Zest in PvP, and then we got Hero versus Byung in the PvP. Yep, so all these matches, uh, by the way, for next week will be the round of four, and then next Tuesday, it will be the grand finals and the third place match. It's probably the top three players that are going to this tournament. The top three players will be advancing to the national, uh, you know, finals in China, the grand finals. This is the national finals in Korea, but top three players are going to China, uh, going to Chengdu, and it's going to be awesome. Yep. This this match today, I feel like is actually the most important one. You guess you get past the round of 16, you go to the round of eight. If you can get to the round of four, the semifinals, you have basically two chances. Even if you lose, you can go to that third and fourth place match and still possibly get through in third place. Yeah. Uh, so our match is today, Sora versus Zaz, Protoss versus Protoss. I'm leaning towards Sora. We'll talk a little bit about that a little bit later. But then Hero versus Byung is uh, the next matchup that we're going to be seeing. A PvP, a team kill. So it could be a weird one. Byung loves his mech on Outboxer, but I'm afraid that's not in the pool anymore. <laughs> but I think we're going to see some pretty straight up uh, lazy boy pushes, some big game aggression out of Byung. And Hero's just going to try to get to that late game, his storms, his colossi, etc. Yeah. That's really where he shines. And honestly, I feel like Hero's just a very solid Protoss throughout. I feel like he's a little bit better than Byung overall, just a little bit more solid. And I feel like he'll take that one. I feel like it'll be pretty close. You know, Byung, he definitely can surprise a lot of people sometimes. He is definitely a top player here in Korea. But Hero, he's just got that little extra edge, I feel. Absolutely. Uh, I feel like because it's a team match, though, could get a bit weird. We could end up going oh, to the yeah. fifth game. But I favor Hero as well going to that second match. I know a lot of people like to see a second Terran in the round of eight, or rather, excuse me, in the round of four. Uh, mm -hmm. He already is the second Terran in the round of eight. And uh, if you could, you know, you can imagine Byung and TY, both of them could potentially end up in our grand finals in China. So we could have a few more Terrans going over there. I know the Terran team is pretty strong overseas as well. So, uh, you know, going to that grand final, of course, we'll be giving you guys a little bit more details about that. You and I will both be in China for that. We'll be talking a lot about the regions and how they're doing a little bit later. But let's focus on Korea for now. And first of all, let's focus on this guy. Uh, this guy in the round of 16 advanced, beating both Pure and Youngwa, getting out in first place. A result that surprised a lot of people, but not me. I'm looking at this guy as a big favorite to, to win this whole tournament. Yeah, I mean, in that group, you had Cure, a guy who actually fell down in fourth place, like, really quickly. He just got crushed in that group. I was expecting him to either get out in first or second place, but no, Sora just crushed him in the first one. I forget who crushed him in the second one, but, um, yeah, it was Sora. Able to make it through. 
Well, uh, Sora looking good. Zest, though, never count this guy out. Ended up losing a match to Trap, actually, in the round of 16. Another um, Protoss. Yeah. And then beat Classic. He was in that PvP group, so he beats Classic, and then is able to beat Trap in the rematch. A pretty close series there. Uh, he narrowly escaped his round of 16 group. Sometimes Zest PvP can be a little bit shaky. He's got this really strong amount of confidence. Uh, when he does a drop, when he does a zealot drop, when he does a move out, he's really confident about it. His harass and his, his control, his uh, micromanagement in the game is quite strong. But sometimes his decision making in the late game can be problematic. And also sometimes he gets a bit ahead of himself, gets a bit nervous uh, or stressed out and falls behind in a series. Oh, hello, hello there. Thanks like for coming. the beards and the hats, of course. Well, let's jump right into bans and picks for this one. Sora banning out Catalina, a big map there, three-player map. And then Zest bans out Nimbus. Then he picks King Sejong Station, then over to Sora. He picks Overgrowth and Merry-Go-Round. And the last pick there for Zest was Froxtrot Labs, leaving game number five on Deadwing. Yeah, Deadwing being the last map here, plus the fact that these guys banned Catalina and Nimbus, makes it feel like they do not want to play a late game. Neither of them do. Starting things off as King Sejong as the first pick, then into to Overgrowth. Only in game three do we see Merrick around, and then Foxtrot goes all the way down to pick four. So these guys want to play on smaller maps. They want to keep it simple, which makes me feel like we're going to see a lot of early game aggression. We're going to see a lot of Blink Stalker play, and you know possibly even uh, just your early Oracle type aggression. Yeah, I, I feel like Zest may be a little bit leaning more towards that Oracle. I know he loves to do it. He's gotten punished for it sometimes, you know, getting punished by Billowy a long time ago and in other such games as such. If Sora, you know, if he's watching this guy, Zest actually has a ton of PvPs that he's played and a ton of information on this guy. Yeah, he really does. There's a lot of information out there for him to study. Sora's been preparing for this tournament really hard. You know, he didn't have to worry about Codest or anything else right now, just this tournament. Let's go into game number one, Sora versus Zest here in the round of eight. Up here on the top left in the red, the Protoss player, he is Sora. And down here at the bottom right in blue, it's Zest. Very strong Protoss player representing KT Rolster here, the odd man out of this round of eight set of matches today. And you know what? We already had two KT Rolster players getting through. We had TY and both stats getting through here. So Zest, if he gets through as well, that'll be three KT players that could possibly go to China. Yeah, and that means, uh, you know, he's definitely going to have at least one KT player actually there. In oh, fact, yeah. uh, at least two if, uh, if, if uh, Zest advances. So that's just something to keep in mind as three out of four players will make it to China. There's a, a bit of prize pool, actually, for this tournament as well. This is not just about uh, advancing. This is a big tournament, a lot of production, so there's quite a bit of prize money involved. This is the strongest region. Uh, you know, this is, just to put it in perspective, this is not just a bunch of people meeting up at a land center uh, for their region to play a tournament really quick to see who's going to China. This is, like, the top-tier tournament. We've got fans coming across the world. We have foreign fans here in Korea watching this match because these players are so good. We've got a huge studio production. This is on television. Okay, so this yeah. is a really big deal for this country. This country has, for very, very many years in StarCraft, just always been the top country for StarCraft, StarCraft 1, StarCraft 2, both. So uh, just keep that in mind. Yeah, definitely a very important tournament. Right off the bat here, the only thing I noticed really different is that Zess actually went for a slightly faster gate here. Not 11, but on 12. So we will get that slightly faster than Sora here. Yeah, you can see that on the production tab. Dropping it down a little bit earlier. Go ahead and put a second pile on over here to the left side. Spreading them out a little bit more. Then Sora's more conservative placement there. And he's going to go for an earlier scout. And actually, not Ooh. a scout. He's going for a proxy. Yeah. We see this a lot on this map, actually. Pretty funnily, you know. Zest is checking. He might no, actually no, build his gonna, tech. Yeah. I think he's going to put a Stargate down here. Well, this is going to get really funky. This could be Proxy Stargate versus, like, slightly Proxy Stargate, I guess. Well, a hidden Stargate, I guess, is probably the best way to describe it. Low ground. Could be a Twilight Council, though, don't forget. I yeah, mean, actually, really with, could that, be anything. Uh, with that quick Mothership core, looks like he's not going to have enough gas for that uh, Stargate. Just going to put down that Twilight. Uh, this placement is kind of funky. I don't know if he's going to end up doing Dark Shrine or not. This Sora Scout will actually be picked off here. Island does go down, meanwhile. And Zest is checking. We'll actually see this. 
should see this. Oh! Does he turn and check? He doesn't. He didn't. Was no. not looking at the screen. Yeah. I you can't believe the probe. the probe is even falling because he doesn't know, or does he? Well, that's that's crazy. Actually, doesn't check. That's that's wow. That that was so unbelievably close, and you know, like you were saying, I guess he just didn't. He wasn't looking at the moment. And look at this. Zest is gonna throw down a dark shrine. Well, this is really good for Zest. Um, this is almost certainly going to be a proxy oracle play. Uh, there's there's not much else you could do with a Stargate like this. And he's going to miss what? it. He's going to miss it because it's oh, just out of Oh, come on. He's targeting it, too. He changed the path to go scout over here. I think he senses something. You know, he came all the way back. He saw the probe, I guess, of Sora. This doesn't want to leave anything to chance. And, you know... With this Oracle, it can grant detection, but it's a long way from home. So when the Oracle comes out and you know, burns all of its energy killing probes, uh, it's going to be hard for that to come home and actually detect the DTs. The Dark Shrine is about 70% done right now. It's got two Stalkers at home to deter the Oracle. This is looking really good for Zest. Uh, you know, I, can't, I really can't imagine Sora actually making this Oracle do equivalent damage. Let's find out, though. I don't think he has anything at home. No sentries, nothing. Oh man, here we go. Oracle okay, the scout in. though. He scouts it. Yeah, he just scout. wants to turn this around and send it home right now, and get that detection up. He's sending it home right away. Starts a robo immediately as well. He's going to pick off this probe, and the first DT has been warped in. It's got a long way to walk though. That pylon is really far out because the probe was scouting a lot. He wasn't close enough to make a closer pylon. And look at this. He's going to try to block the ramp. It looks like as well. Already setting up one stalker. Second one on the way. Doesn't yep. look like it's going to get back he's, in time, but he has it. He's just got that detection there. Two Stalkers going to kill this guy. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. That detection on that Oracle lasts a long time. Almost lemon squeezy, but he did take a few damage hits on that Stalker. <laughs> and I would have said that was uh, not quite lemon squeezy, but, but okay, easy okay. peasy. All right, all right. <laughs> uh, a nice cleanup. And, and you know, despite what I thought, Sora, with that scout there and the quick reaction to send that Oracle home right away, is able to get this... Part of the problem being that pylon placement was so far away for Zest uh, to get those DTs in. Yeah, really was. Oracle's trying to come back here and possibly get some damage. We did see Sora at the end of this whole bout. Looked like he went down, or rather he was up on probes uh, by about five, and he's going to continue that race. He's ahead four now. And with the loss of that Zest pylon, he's actually supply blocked here. It's going to cost him a lot. I like Zest's position quite a lot here, though, because he does have that robotics. And that's something that Sora is missing. He spent a lot of gas on those three sentries. And, oh, no, he actually has it now. He does get that robo now. I, I forgot. He had it faster, but they both have robos. Okay, so that that being said, um, which tech is more useful? Is it the Oracle tech or is it the Dark Templar tech? Because they're both those techs that are really useful in the early game and then really useful in the late game oftentimes because you can surprise someone with DTs. You can use oh. the Oracle. Oh, wow. Look at this. Zest, you know, I, I like to talk about this a lot with Zest. He's a very confident player. He is not scared to go for something tricky like this, but sometimes it gets scouted and sometimes it just doesn't go your way. Um, he just, he really likes to be tricky. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Well, let's see, let's see uh, how this works. I mean, it's going to be double Phoenix. It's very expensive. Yeah. He needs to deny this hallucination scout, but I don't think he'll be able to, especially because his stalkers are away chasing this oracle. This is no coincidence. He wants to make sure all the anti... Well, <laughs> I'm like trying to give him points here, but looks like he's just going to scout with this instead. Needs to get to the bottom left of the base, though. He hasn't seen anything yet. Yeah, and that oracle is stuck on the right side. He's sending out another hallucination, but if you look at the mini-map, okay, our observer is going to show us. He is going to scout this, so he is going to know. Go. Let's see how Zest reacts to the scout. I mean, you pretty much have to continue making Phoenixes. That's just too much gas to have spent to not commit yeah. to this. But what, what Sora can do is go ahead and get uh, his Twilight Council up and add a few cannons. Because he has the forge. He's had it for a while. He's got one cannon up in his main. Just a few cannons. Nexus cannon. All of these things are going to make shutting this down a lot easier. Yeah. And I mean, he already has that cannon for the DT. Like, if Zess wanted to, he could have possibly tried to go for some War Prison Morass with the DTs. But Sora just very prepared. And uh, what I'm concerned about is how much is Zess actually going to commit to this? Because as you get later and later, you know, the Phoenix is not going to be the best at killing Colossi and stuff like this. You already see Sora has one out already. 
and more on the way. I think he may end up switching out of Colossi after the second one. Uh, because, you know, you want to get Charge out, you get the Archons out, and the Archons are going to just, obviously, they can't even be lifted by Phoenixes. Nexus Cannon goes down here. He's not even going to commit to killing that Mothership Core. It's just not worth it. But but this is a scary moment where he moves out with that first Colossus. He's got that warp in down the bottom left at that, uh, you know, proxy Stargate location. And there's definitely not going to be any third base anytime soon. In fact, Zest is going to be hard-pressed to hold this. He doesn't have enough Phoenixes just yet. Is this his first Immortal, actually? Look at how many Second. Stalkers are out right now. But still, yeah, it's only it's only one immortal that's out at this moment. Yeah. And here comes a hallucinated colossus making this targeting a little bit harder. In fact, he gets a third one. And he's just gonna try to force his way through here. Sentries are basically paperweights right now. And probes come off the line, but Zest is really hard pressed to hold this. In fact, now he targets the Nexus down, and I think he needs to be a little bit more careful with that, because these sentries don't do a lot of damage. But with another round of warp ends, he should be fine. Plus, I think another Colossus is going to come join pretty soon. Yeah. Here come those Phoenixes. Look at all those Stalkers that just joined in there. He has like six gates back at home. Phoenixes finally come back. They are targeting the right one. So he does get the Colossus down. And he is holding for now. He's pushing him back. Yeah, good kiting here. Uh, the target on the Nexus was a bit questionable. Um, that was a bit weird. But regardless, he warps in a ton more of units right at the front this time. And force fields are going to make these zealots all the more useful. Unfortunately, they get a bit stuck here, though. Sentries do get picked off, but it's not really the big part of this army. He just needs to make sure he can keep his immortals alive. With these force fields, though, it's very difficult. I think Sora has overstayed his welcome. Yeah, he really has. So many immortals are coming out at a time. He, he did lose one, but he has two that are decently healthy there. There's one at full health. He's making more. So well, I got that, a plus two on the way. That started out great, and then he stayed way too long. He's he's in trouble now. I mean, already his plus two is on the way. His blink research, I do not agree with that. I don't even know what his idea with that is. Uh, this Oracle is just going to sack it. He does a reveal here, too, before he dies. Pretty cool. Oh, nice placement on these Phoenixes. There's only four Phoenixes on, on the uh, on the ground, or rather in the air, excuse me, <laughs> on the map. Yeah, yeah. There's That's not enough to warrant Blink. Yeah, and it really isn't. It's I just mean, not going to be useful in almost any other way for the rest of this game. Blink's never really the best answer to the, all these Phoenixes regardless as well. I mean, if you get a ton of Blink Stalkers out here, they can be good against a small number of Colossi if you get really good positioning, but... Outside of that, you know, I, I'm not really sure about this. I would have much rather liked to see that charge come out here very quickly and maybe go into just charge load Archon, have a couple of Colossi in the bag to support. I'm just, I mean, it, it looks to me like he just wants to end the game with these blinks, but that, that's like the only thing that would make sense to me. But he's making a third Nexus, he's getting plus two. So I guess he just really wants to have this aggressive force to maybe cancel a third base, maybe catch some Immortals, especially these Immortals that got a bit too far which he no does know about. He saw them kill his pylon. And those oh, immortals those are immortals. so exposed. <laughs> Blink is not done yet. 12 seconds on that. Well, this is just too many immortals here. Plus the phoenixes. In fact, he's going to want to use that Blink to get out of here in a second. Yeah. Zest is actually on the chase right now. You can actually pick up these phoenix uh, some of the stalkers if he wants. Can be a bit risky because there are so many. But if he has that whole army together, possibly could work. Third base is now coming up here. Blink Stalkers are just a composition that in, in late game PvP, or even in the mid game, just generally speaking, after like the 10 to 12 minute mark, you don't want to research Blink, except in very specific circumstances, like when your opponent's got a ton of Blink Stalkers and you need that counter Blink to actually be able to fight with them in the middle of the map. It's just not that useful of an upgrade. It, in this case, if he gets in here and does damage, we'll see. He's going to come in here and be able to pick off a few pylons at least. They're actually going for the robotics instead. And there's not a very quick response here. Yeah, doesn't even cancel that Colossus. He's going to lose that Colossus that was about to pop out here. Very nicely done by Sori. He is using that blank. And look at this. At the same time, Warps and Zealots here at the third base denies that mining. Oh, you got to say, I just don't think he was expecting this many Blink Stalkers to suddenly come into his main. It's not really a threat. It's not really an issue you think about when your opponent goes for tech like this. Those Zealots do finally get cleaned up. But he's got his own third base under attack. Yep. Zest is microing this at the same time, so that's that's part of the reason why he had a bit of a flop there, I think, in his defense. What do you think about this Stark Shrine? you think he's just trying to catch Zest off guard or possibly go for some drops or something? Well, you know, it worked once, and he killed the Robo, so he might be thinking there's not too many observers on the map. There's only one on the map, in fact, right now. And he's actually going to try to go over here and snipe this. He's making a fool out of me, man, he's insulting him for getting those, uh, this playing Stalkers out. Not insulting, but rather, <laughs> you know, speaking ill of, I should say. Uh, it's working out really well for him so far. We'll see about the late game, but for now, 
doing pretty well, better than these Phoenixes are. And he's just gonna come around here. He's actually, this map allows you to do this so easily because you can now go into the main base and blink out. Uh -oh. Except, surprise, I kept some defense at home this time. He is losing so many stalkers. Look at this blink as well. Miss blinks a lot of those stalkers, loses even more. And look at those units lost tab. So many units lost here for Sora. He's gonna try to make that up here at the third base though with three DTs. There's only one observer on the map. It's right with this army. He's split those DTs though. Really surprised he's oh, not no. doing that. Two of them get swiped and the other one's just attacking idly. I guess he was just trying to control these stalkers. This has been a totally nutso game. Uh, 20 worker deficit right now between these two. And here comes another blink of the main. He's gonna try to kill a few more of these probies. And uh, let's see, he gets about three or four maybe. Gets a pylon on his way out. So right now it's awkward for Zest because he's got the better army for sure but he just doesn't have the economy to support it. He's even trying to add a fleet beacon right now. That's going to be pretty expensive. Yeah. Blink trying to finally stop that Phoenix harass. Seems like, you know, those Phoenix is at some point they weren't even able to lift because they used all their energy. Uh, it took Sora a big while to get used to that and actually stop that. But uh, for now, he's getting his fourth base and he does have a lot of probes left over, so he should be okay. Colossus count is insane. It definitely warrants a Tempest transition. Uh, double Stargate's coming up for Sora now, as he knows he can afford to, to produce off of those at this point in time in the game. And much easier than his opponent. And his, star his own Stargate is actually still alive to the bottom left, so it almost makes you wonder if he's going to make Tempest or not, because I think he would have added a Fleet Beacon too if he, if he had planned to do that, because he's got that Stargate, so he could make one. Yeah. Nice snipe on the Observer there. It's going to stop that annoying harass unless he sort of decides to commit to getting another one over there. Wow. Three Stargates and plus one. Now, this is starting to remind me of that PvP we saw between these two on May as you're actually talking to Kanata, the green commentator, <laughs> uh, with the Monday caster about yeah. that earlier in the makeup room because, you know, we had some disagreement on who we thought was actually going to win this match. Okay, he's doing a Void Ray switch. Oh, so man. that's what I was thinking because he didn't make that Fleet Beacon. I was wondering about this. This guy really is your player, Wolf. This is like your buddy. This is my dude. <laughs> he's my dude, man. Not my dude, man, but like he's my dude, comma, man. Okay. Um, so let's see. Uh, oh, it doesn't get scouted. Oh, man. He's like, oh, I need Tempest. A lot of Colossi over here. But uh, Tempest are not very good against Void Rays in high numbers. Then again, Archons and Stalkers, if you spread them well and, and get that good concave and you fight the Void Rays, Void Rays can be paperweights in late game PvP. I know it sounds crazy to say, and, and especially coming from me, but sometimes <laughs> in this matchup you don't always have to respect the Void Rays, unless yeah. you're Creator Prime and your opponent has like 22 of them. Uh, but yeah, let's see how many of these he gets away with making before he gets scouted, because if you don't know that you need to counter the Void Rays, then you can't even attempt to respect them. Yeah. This, again, is just another trick you play. This is like an awesome PvP to start off with. And look at this, Sora. Over here, he's got the full scout on Zest. He has that observer right over those Stargates. He's all of those Tempests that are quote unquote hiding back at the base there of Zest. Hiding in plain sight. Pretty much. As Rorschach would say. Uh, that fourth base is so late, by the way, for Zest. Sora's had his up for so much longer. Zest is like a really confident player when it comes to his harass. When it comes to his move outs in mid and late game PvP, he just seems uh, oftentimes a bit lost. Uh, the Tempest idea is a smart one, but he just still doesn't know about those Void Rays. And the Void Rays are going to make these Colossi laughable. They're going to get da knocked down so quickly. And he's still making three at a time here. And these Stalkers can actually go and harass this base uh, when it gets up and mining. He can go stand behind that base and, and harass it. Something that Zest could be doing himself. He could actually be moving behind that base, swiping the probes of this Colossi, then moving around. You know, with his Mothership Core, he's got the ability to recall. Now he's really getting ready to force an engagement here. He has plus three for his ground, plus one air weapons though for Sora's Void Rays. And oh, these Stalkers uh, are a bit out of position, and that's a stalkers. great tag there on that army. Yeah, really is. Stalkers just running right into the army of Zest there. The Tempest having such long range. I'm not sure if Sora have a, has enough Void Rays here to uh, fight this off. He does get the Mother Shore immediately. Oh, the Tempest though in the back have total control. This is all about the Void Rays right now. He's using that prismatic alignment and the Colossi get to do everything they want because those time warps are eliminated. He's just killing the Archons first, and then the Tempests are gonna go down next. 
The ground army here just does not matter. In fact, he should be sending those zealots to harass the third base at least, because just having them run here is totally useless. DT is over here for the defense, plus these cannons. Looks like this may just end up being too much for Zest to handle. Now at least he knows what he needs to make. He needs to make a lot of Stalkers and Archons to deal with these Void Rays. Yeah, immediately three Archons and two more High Templar on the production tab. Just needs to deal with these Void Rays. I see a big smile on your face as you're seeing the Void Rays being respected, basically. <laughs> he, needs to, he needs to get those Archons out right away. Archons are not armored, so they don't get affected by that prismatic alignment. Beyond that, uh, you know, they do AoE damage and Void Rays have a tendency to stack. That's part of the reason why they're so strong, in fact, because they can all do damage on a, a, you know, very focused on a small area. They don't need to be fanned out to do their damage. Um, and you do have to, you know, split them manually when you fight against Archons, so making Archons is the right choice here. A ton of extra minerals here for Zest. By the way, our Observer is highlighting this. It's important to note because he could be doing a lot with that. And those extra gateways he's making right now are so late. Could have made those a long time ago and could have been doing a lot of Zealot Harass. This is that late game Sora that we're seeing here that Zest just, he's not able to match. Yeah, Sora definitely showing his prowess here in the late game. Zest just not having the, the best decision making so far. He needs to take those gases at his forward base at least. If he's going to have, if he's gonna float this many minerals, he has to at least even it up here. He's just not dealing with this DT wall either. No, he's not. He's actually killing his own probes to kill it. He's actually attacking his own probes there for a second. Like, finally does end up getting that observer over here. Yeah. Uh, but he, he's just, he's lacked the infrastructure of having cannons for defense. Sora has had so much money, he's had that fourth base for so long, he could take a fifth base pretty soon. Yeah, fifth base of UE, that's what I said. Uh, <laughs> and he has just all that extra gas to be able to make double void reproduction constantly. And he's making the switch into Colossi now because he knows the last thing Zest wants to make is Tempest against this many void rays. He gets his Colossus count up because he can afford to with two Colossi at a time coming out here. He's going to be able to deal with these Zealots and Archons on the ground, no problem. It's a great composition against Void Rays, but Solar's already moving away from that. Yeah, and look at this. Even this late into the game, getting some harass done with those Stalkers that are had that have survived for so long here. I think he's getting ready to recall. Uh, he might try to snipe this base and recall. Um, uh, time Warp would be so nice, though, against the Zealot army. This is really starting to remind me of that maze game. Yeah, it was almost pure Zealot out of Zest. nearly identical. I mean, look at this. Zest is just rerouting that army. He's not. He does not want to fight that army. He's just going for the counterattack here. Okay, you're gonna leave the zealots to kill it. There's the recall. Man, he's just gonna let this base fall. But he needs to get set up over here. He's got a wall. He's got little cannons. There's a lot of archons. There's eight archons right now. His colossus count's only at three. He's about to have a fourth and fifth one in just a second. Yep. And God, Zest is just a bit nervous here. He's just. He's. He's. He's just moving his army around all over the place. You know, he doesn't save his base. He doesn't do much more than cancel a fifth base, which doesn't really matter when he himself is still on three bases. Yeah. We're actually just seeing Sora play this so much better. Look at this. He gets flanked from both sides by the Void Rays. Doesn't even have all of his Archons together at the same time. He is flanking those Colossi in the back. That is something to note. And he is warping in a ton of units there on that Warp Prism. But is it going to matter in the end with all these Void Rays? He needs to send the Zealots somewhere else. I know this is masochistic what we're watching here, just leave the Zealots and die in the Void Rays. <laughs> Send them somewhere else. Uh, you know, there they can be useful, they can kill these other Zealots, but... He just GG's. He, he, he was basically dead, but man, he just looked so flustered. Sora's got his number right now. Definitely true. Man, I, I'm beginning to see the light a little bit here. Sora is just playing this so well. His PvP is pretty masterful, he's practiced a lot, and it's obvious that he studied Zest. He, he's gotten Zest like this before, like we said so many times on Maze, and he does it here on King's Hero Station, a two-player map that is decently sized, but it's not the biggest one in the pool. Sora's looking really good. Yeah, I'm telling you, man. Just his decision-making in general, it looks better than Zest right he now. He forced the late game. He made it into that position. Hiding the Void Rays is really important. 